The world is full of people with different backgrounds and opinions, but one thing we can all agree on is how great Target really is. Like you can seriously redecorate your home, revamp your wardrobe, and stock up your groceries all in one trip. Like how amazing is that? 17 year old Kansas native Kelsey Smith was all aboard the Target train. But one summer day in 2007, Kelsey walked through those automatic sliding doors, not knowing it would be her last time. After checking out, Kelsey walked through the, the parking lot to her car where she was snatched up and never seen alive again. June 2nd, 2007 seemed like any other day for Kelsey. A little before 7 p.m., she popped by a Target in Overland Park, Kansas to buy an anniversary present for her boyfriend. And in true teen romance fashion, they were celebrating their six month anniversary. And now I'm rolling out my pastry. While Kelsey was at the store, she called her mom to ask what aisle the picture frames were in. At 7.07, Kelsey was seen on security camera footage walking through the Target parking lot to get to her car. She made plans to meet her with her boyfriend around 7.30, but 7.30 came and went and Kelsey hadn't shown up. She wasn't responding to any texts or phone calls, so Kelsey's boyfriend started to freak out. He called her dad who immediately notified the cops. But even though Target has a way of sucking people in for hours of shopping, police knew that wasn't the case. When detectives showed up at the store, they started searching the area and spotted Kelsey's abandoned car in the Macy's parking lot that was across the street. Officials looked through the car and found Kelsey's wallet and purse, as well as the anniversary present she had just bought. And at that point, detectives were certain the young girl had been abducted. When they looked through the security footage that was recovered from the parking lot, they saw Kelsey walking towards her car. And at first they didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, but upon closer inspection, officials spotted something very strange. I'm just gonna take my plate, I'm just gonna lay it on top of my puff pastry, take my knife and I'm just gonna cut around the plate to make an even circle. They reported seeing a flash in the footage heading in the direction of Kelsey's car. The so-called flash looked like it may have been someone running. I guess this person was either super fast or the quality for the camera was really bad. Or maybe it was a combination of the two. But based on what they saw on camera and what they found in Kelsey's car, detectives theorized that someone ran toward Kelsey in the parking lot and forced her into her own car. My thing is, why didn't anyone see this? Target is always popping. So you can't tell me there weren't any other shoppers in the area to witness the attack. Investigators were looking through a bunch of clips from that evening when they spotted something super suspicious. In just about every aisle Kelsey went down, there was a young man who was trailing behind her, clearly stalking her. The man wouldn't stop staring at her, but he never really talked to her. Officials couldn't figure out who the creepy shopper was, so that they decided to plaster his photo everywhere in hopes that someone would recognize the picture and rat him out. Not long after the camera footage was released, a guy came forward saying the mysterious target man was his 26-year-old neighbor, Edwin Roy Hall. The cops looked into and agreed Edwin was the guy they were looking for. Meanwhile, Edwin was sitting at work on his lunch break when the story about Kelsey's disappearance came up and the news stations in the background. One of his coworkers then pointed to the TV and asked, isn't that your truck? Well, that's one way to find out you're the prime suspect in a major crime. So the news played the security footage from the parking lot that day and one of the clips they showed was of Edwin's truck racing by. Edwin's coworkers was convinced that the truck in the video was the same exact one owned by the dude sitting right next to him. The coworker even peeked outside of Edwin's car in the lot to confirm and all of a sudden, Edwin was like, <coughs> I'm sick, I have to go home. On June 6th, four days after the incident, police officers showed up at Edwin's house. When they got there, he was packing up his bags with his wife and four-year-old son for a vacation. But I'm guessing that that vacay was a last minute trip prompted by what he just saw on the news. Well, detectives didn't quite believe Edwin, so they took him into custody for questioning. At first, he claimed he didn't have anything to do with Kelsey's disappearance, but after finding out Edwin's fingerprints were a match for the set they found in Kelsey's car, they knew that he was lying. Edwin was then charged for abducting and executing Kelsey, and right now, you're probably wondering, wait, executing? I thought Kelsey was just missing at this point. Well, earlier that day, her remains were found. Investigators had been hustling Kelsey's phone provider for days to get her phone records. When Verizon finally gave them over, investigators learned that Kelsey's cell phone pinged off of a tower near a lake about 20 miles away. After about just 45 minutes of looking, Kelsey was found in a small hollow in a wooden area near the lake. She had been covered in a bunch of branches and twigs that were placed in a meticulous pattern that some say resembled a pentagram. Kelsey's belt was wrapped around her neck, but the rest of her clothes were off. Her pink shirt was found nearby and it appeared to have been stained with bleach, which made investigators believe someone tried to destroy the evidence. 
It sounds like this person hasn't watched enough true crime stories to know bleach doesn't always fix everything. After taking photos and swabbing for DNA, officials sent off Kelsey's body for an autopsy. And medical examiners determined the girl had passed away from being throttled. There also was evidence that she had been physically violated by her attacker. And even though the detectives now knew what ended up happening to Kelsey that evening, they still didn't know what made Edwin do it. After Edwin knew he was caught with no way out, he started talking. And based on his interviews, witness statements, and various camera footage, here's what went down. We gotta put water on the edge of these little pastries to get them to stick together. That afternoon, Edwin went to grab a bite at a Mexican restaurant near the Oak Park Mall. In true Edwin fashion, he left without paying and dashed over to the Dillard's. Edwin claimed he went to Dillard's to buy something nice for his wife, but the dude was flat out broke and there was no footage of him actually picking things up and looking at them. And even if the dude didn't plan on buying anything, you'd think that he'd at least pretend. So Edwin was last seen at Dillard's at 5.50 and we're not really sure what happened in the hour following that, but what we do know is that Kelsey rolled up to Target right before seven and seconds later, Edwin pulled up to the same parking lot. After she parked, Kelsey got out of the car and walked into the store. Moments later, Edwin did the same thing. So Edwin was in Target and where does he go other than the jewelry section? Which makes me wonder, did he think that Kelsey would be in that section? Was he actually looking for something cute for his lady at home? Or was he planning on stealing some jewelry to make a good flip on Facebook Marketplace? Whatever the reasoning, Edwin was posted up by the necklaces when he saw Kelsey. He mentioned thinking she had nice legs. Of all the things he could notice about this woman, he picked her legs. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a nice set of legs, but for someone who went on to do something so horrific, you'd think that they'd pick something a little less PG. Now, I got a little bit more dough and a little bit of time, so why not roll a third vegetable hand pie? When Edwin caught a glimpse of Kelsey's face as she turned, he thought she looked 12 years old. And even after thinking that, he still went after her. This dude is clearly whacked. As I mentioned earlier, Edwin was low on money, so instead of buying anything, he waited until he saw Kelsey go to the checkout line, which is when he left the store to wait for her outside. So after Kelsey checked out, she walked to her car and put her bags in the passenger seat. She then walked around the back of her car to get in, but as soon as she opened up the driver's door, Edwin came up behind her, held his air firearm to the back of her head and forced her in the car. Shortly after that, Kelsey's car was then seen leaving the parking lot and turning west. From there, Edwin took Kelsey to a wooded area near Longview Lake where she was assaulted and horrifically taken out with her own belt. After she was gone for good, Edwin tried to clean up a bit, douse some bleach on the scene, and fled. But that afternoon, a couple was on a walk near the lake when they saw Edwin come out of the woods right by where Kelsey was found. They said he had a blue duffel bag and got into his black pickup truck that had a bed full of sticks, branches, and leaves. After that, I guess he just went about his normal life until a few days later when the cops showed up and interrupted his vacay packing sesh. Well, based on the DNA evidence, security footage, and Edwin's confession, this case wasn't too difficult for the jury to decide on. In July of 2008, Edwin was found guilty and one month later, he was sentenced to his life in prison without possibility of parole. A memorial service was held for Kelsey where her friends and family shared fond memories, kind words, and plenty of tears. Kelsey's family went on to create the Kelsey Smith Foundation, an organization that educates young adults on how to avoid becoming crime victims through safety awareness seminars and self-defense training. Now I'm gonna take my egg wash and just brush my little hand pies. Cause this is gonna create that nice golden brown color in which we love. In 2009, Kelsey's parents worked with government officials to pass the Kelsey Smith Act. The act allows law enforcement to quickly obtain the cell phone location of people who are determined to be in danger. The reason Kelsey's parents pursued this act stemmed from the issues that they ran into with obtaining Kelsey's cell phone records. They were frustrated with their phone provider for not giving the police any information from her cell that could have saved her life. Later, it was discovered that Kelsey had already been snuffed by the time they tried to access her phone location, but Kelsey's family knew this act may help save the lives of other victims who were abducted. And now I'm gonna take these and put them in our oven and then we're gonna wait. In most abduction cases, investigators have a super quick window to make a move. So by passing this act, many lives have been and probably will be saved. So based on the way everyone talked about Kelsey, she seemed to be a very kind and intelligent young woman. She was slain just a few days after graduating high school where she played clarinet in the band. And one of her bandmates even said in an interview, she was a bright crayon in the box. 
Kelsey was super respectful and kind and never found herself in trouble. Most people think that Edwin went after Kelsey because of his troubled past. Edwin was adopted at seven years old after a couple saw him in a newspaper article that featured him. They wanted to give him a better life and as much as they may have tried, it appeared to be too late. And at age 16, Edwin threatened his adoptive sister with a blade, so he was convicted and went back into the state custody, never to return back to his adoptive parents' home again. So there's already quite a bit of trauma going on there. I'm not really sure what went down in Edwin's first seven years of life, but based on the fact he was put up for adoption, I'm going to guess it wasn't the happiest. At age 16, Edwin threatened his adoptive sister with a blade, so he was convicted and went back into state custody, never to return to his adoptive home again. So there's already quite a bit of trauma going on there. I'm not really sure what went down in Edwin's first seven years of life, but based on the fact that he was put up for adoption, I'm going to guess it wasn't the happiest. And we're already starting to see the violent tendencies with Edwin, so he's definitely got the guts to do something on a larger scale as an adult. After Edwin left juvenile custody, he bounced around Kansas until meeting his wife and settling in the Kansas City area. Now, according to Edwin's supposed MySpace page, the best and most factual source there is, his interests were eating small children and harming animals. But the MySpace page wasn't technically Edwin's. The name on the account was Jack with no last name. And according to the profile, Jack was the same age as Edwin, lived in the same area, and was linked to another profile that had the same name as his wife, Aletha. But the MySpace page wasn't technically Edwin's. The name on the account was Jack with no last name. And on top of all that, the profile picture looked way too much like Edwin for it to be a coincidence. And there was even a little boy in the photo that resembled Edwin's son. So based on all of that, Everyone thought that Jack was actually Edwin and believed the interest on the MySpace page alluded to what was going on in Edwin's sick mind. But detectives still couldn't really find a reason why Edwin would go after Kelsey in particular. Had he been planning his attack on Kelsey or did he just come up with the whole thing when he saw her drive up to Target that day? If she didn't go buy her boyfriend a present that day, would Edwin still have gotten to her? Due to Edwin's dark hobbies and aggressive past, some people think that Kelsey's slang could have been related to religious practices like a satanic ritual. So maybe he knew he was going to snuff somebody leading up to the event, but he was waiting for the right person to sacrifice. There are still so many mysteries around Kelsey's abduction, and we may never find them out. But after her dramatic farewell, there have been multiple other women who have been approached by creepy men in the parking lots near the Overland Park area. Hold on a second, let me get my hand pies. In the summer of 2019, a woman made a pit stop at a quick trip gas station. As she was walking back to her car, some dude said he was on a trip to visit his mom in Omaha, asked the girl to get into his car to help him read his gas gauge. A word to the wise, never get into a random stranger's car at a gas station. If they need help reading their gas gauge, don't feel the need to be a hero. Shortly after that, the same guy went to a Walmart parking lot where he found another young woman and used the same story about visiting his mom in Omaha. This time he asked for money. Thankfully, neither of the women fell for this dude's trap, but who knows if he's gone after other women who weren't as lucky. Sadly, these kinds of stories keep happening and I don't know what it is about these stores and parking lots. Oh, these look great. But that seems to be a common place of attacks for abductors. I have some ham pies that are just waiting to be eaten. So stay safe out there.